And in this video, we will sand the neck. Now first, we need to make sure that your headstock is finished. So if you've not cut this out, uh, do so now. You need to leave 3 quarters of an inch above the top tuner hole for the tuner. And I suggest about a 6 inch overall length. And the pattern uh, is normally that laid out on the back of the headstock so that you can uh, use it on the bandsaw. Here's a selection of uh, different styles, and of course you can do any style you want. Okay, so um, once that's done, erase the pencil lines that are probably still on your veneer. Take a sheet of paper and fold it in half, and then fold it again and wrap it over the end of the neck. And this is going to protect that from the vice jaws. And clamp it on the vise and uh, have the CNC routed portion accessible to the side of the vise. And now obtain this curved sanding block which is shaped to fit into the corners uh, as we see here. And this kind of a motion is effective at removing the CNC marks and doing it while we're sanding with the grain, that is along the grain direction. Try not to sand across the grain because that will create scratches that are hard to remove later. So uh, there, that will take some time. You'll find these transitions, the there and here, will take as much time as the main shaft. And now we're starting with the main shaft. I have a one inch wide, 150 grit strip. Uh, and I'm working with the grain, along the grain direction. If two inch strip is available, I would use that instead, it's easier. And uh, you can put your thumbs in different places to concentrate the pressure. Uh, be sure to keep uh, advancing the strip so that you're using fresh 150. It'll cut better. Uh, as the 150 dulls, it becomes more like 180 or 200, which actually can be convenient at the end. Uh, there I'm trying to blend the shaft uh, type of sanding into the transitions. Blow, uh, move the dust away and then check the smoothness and there I found a little uh, rough spot so I'm going to hit that again and check it again. The transitions are the hardest that to particularly there and your hand will spend quite a bit of time up there so you want that to be uh, friendly. There's different ways you could do this. Uh, rubber sandy blocks work well. Uh, foam sandy blocks we may have as well. Okay, and uh, here's another technique. That's a 150 grit strip underneath the um, special shaped block which has 120. So the 150 will be smoother, of course. Now I'm blending that. Another inspection. Your eye and your hand, or your fingers, are your best tools. So you want to look very closely. And now I'm checking the sides of the fretboard. And there are some machining marks from the CNC which we will remove. Uh, this is a 150 block. I would suggest a shorter block than this one. Now this one, when it's this long, it tends to sand mostly in the middle. And it misses uh, the, the ends there and down there. So uh, though here I'm doing that by hand just with paper. A shorter block or a, a rubber block would also work well. Okay, and it's totally optional. You can repeat it 180 to 220 grit, but the 150 grit after it's worn will be about that. So I usually don't find it's necessary. Okay, now the next step, we want to flatten the fretboard. It might have a little twist in it or bow, and so I'm, used, I'm marking pencil lines all across it on both sides, and now the goal is to sand until those pencil lines are gone. And when you've got that, you'll have a flat fretboard. So here you can see I've made some progress, but there's a little bit that's not sanded yet, and this may take some time. This is a 120 grit strip. Uh, there I've got the whole thing sanded. Pencil lines are basically gone. Um, I forgot that you could, I have a vacuum cleaner nearby, so this is showing what I uh, suggest is turn the vacuum on while you're sanding. It'll keep the dust down. And that also is very helpful to clean your fretboard and the strip. The strip will work better if it doesn't have a bunch of dust on it. You don't want to, you don't want to go too crazy because those fret slots are only so deep. Um, they're about 
85,000 steep and the fret tang is about 60,000. So you should be fine, but if you feel like you're sanding too much, then see your instructor. Okay, so here we are sanding uh, the other surfaces of the neck with a 150 block. I do all of the flat surfaces first. Don't do any corners yet. So we're doing this flat surface of the headstock and the other side. And there might be some, um, some glue marks from that joint. Uh, you can usually get them out if you want. And there we're doing the back of the headstock. This is uh, tricky uh, doing that in there, particularly a little awkward here for the camera. And I do that veneer last because um, it's easily, since it's white, it's easily um, dirtied by other processes. So you do your, your best, or the surface you care about most, you do it last. That's the general rule. Okay, now that we've done all the surfaces, we can do the corners. And uh, so just a ch gentle chamfer on that corner and the other side. You don't need much, but we just we don't want a sharp edge. Uh, I'm holding the block there at different angles to try to give it a little bit of a round. And your again, your finger and your eye are the best tools to inspect. Those little uh, transitions, you have to do those by hand. Now here we want to have a chance for all the length of the fretboard. And the block, this big block, is going to be somewhat ineffective at doing it near the nut, right up there. Uh, so, and, and also maybe down there. So we often have to do that by hand. And then continue with neck finish.